Like most insurance companies, malpractice carriers are known for their paperwork. Applications, statutory notices, invoices, 100-page policies, it can be a lot and can easily overwhelm your filing cabinet. But when a claim hits or you need to go back to figure out which insurance carrier you had for that one locums assignment a few years ago, you'll wish that you had kept your malpractice records in better order. So today we're going to talk about the six things that every doctor needs to keep for their malpractice records. Plus, stick around to the end because we're going to give you a free resource to help you keep your information neat and tidy so that you can be a smarter and more organized healthcare professional for years to come. Welcome to Malpractice Insights, the show dedicated to helping healthcare professionals understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. My name is Jennifer Wiggins, CEO of Aegis Malpractice Solutions, and I'm so glad you've joined us today. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. We release a new episode every week, both on YouTube and your favorite podcast streaming platform. So be sure to like and subscribe to stay connected. All right, let's jump in. When it comes to key documents for your malpractice insurance, there are six items that we recommend every healthcare professional hold on to. The first key document is your employment contract. The employment contract sets out the rights and obligations of both the employee and the employer. There are a number of items in the employment contract that are of critical importance to a healthcare provider. But from a malpractice perspective, the things we're most concerned with are, number one, information on who paid for your coverage. Number two, what are you actually covered for or not covered for? And number three, who is responsible for your tail coverage when you leave. When the time comes for you to terminate your employment, you'll want to refer back to your contract to understand how your malpractice insurance may be affected. For example, are you able to cancel the coverage yourself and receive any refunds? Are you able to maintain the insurance on your own if you want to? Will the employer be buying your tail or do you have that responsibility? And if it's your responsibility, are you able to secure tail through any carrier you wish, or are there rules or limitations that you must abide by? It's critically important that you save a copy of your employment contract so that you can reference it as needed throughout the course of your career. The second key document that you need to have is your certificate of insurance, also called a COI, or your policy declaration page. Your COI or declaration page is a one-page document that shows the details of your malpractice coverage for a given policy period. It lists the name of the malpractice carrier, who is insured, what kind and how much coverage, the dates of coverage, and so forth. You'll want to keep either the COI or the declaration page for every policy you've ever had. If, for example, you were insured with ProAssurance from January 1st, 2020 to January 1st, 2025, you should have five different COIs, one for each year the coverage was in force. It's important for you to have these items as a reference in the event that you need to go back to see which policy you were insured under for a specific event. The third key document that you need to save is your tail endorsement. If you were previously insured on a claims made policy and secured tail insurance after it canceled, make sure that you keep a copy of the endorsement. When a doctor buys a claims made malpractice policy, coverage is triggered based on when the claim is made against him. So he must carry the insurance while he's actively practicing. And then once he cancels, he must secure tail in order to have coverage for any claims that may be filed into the future for patients that he treated when he was previously insured. 
your tail starts at your cancellation date and then extends your coverage into the future for any claims that may be made against you after you've already walked away from that policy. Make sure you keep a copy of this tail endorsement to confirm the details of your coverage should a claim arise in the future. The fourth key document that you need to hang on to are any copies of claim history reports or loss runs that have been requested for you. A claim history report, also called a loss run, shows all of the claims that have been reported to a carrier for a specific individual for a given period of time. It's common to see five-year claim histories or 10-year claim histories. These reports list the date of the incident, the reporting date, the plaintiff name, a brief description of the case, any payments or monies reserved, and the status of those claims. You are able to request a claim history report for yourself at any time, and you can authorize others to pull these reports on your behalf. Anytime you are given a copy of this report, save it in your files for future reference. The fifth thing that you need to save are any documents related to claim activity, potential, reported, and otherwise. This should go without saying, but it's incredibly important that you hold on to all claim-related documents, even if the issue has been dismissed or the claim successfully resolved. There could come a time when you need to reference this information down the road. And the sixth thing that you need to make sure you hang on to Contact information. Make sure that you hold on to the contact information for all former employers, such as names, email addresses, and phone numbers of administrators, risk managers, or other key contacts within the practice. And make sure that you save contact information for previous malpractice carriers and insurance agents that you've worked with. If you ever need to request a document or information from a previous policy, your malpractice insurance agent or previous carrier can pull that detail for you easily enough. Just make sure you keep a list of contacts so that you can quickly and easily get a hold of someone should you need to. So how should you go about saving all of these key documents? Well, if you're not a fan of big paper files, we recommend scanning and storing all of your documents as PDFs in cloud storage with strict access controls in place to keep any PHI secure. To make things easier for you, we've created a checklist of these key documents along with a simple spreadsheet that you can download and use to keep a log of your work history and your malpractice insurance. We've linked that free resource for you in the show notes and the video description below, so feel free to use that if it would be helpful. If you have any questions on this topic or you want to make sure that you're covered appropriately, click the link in the description box below where you can connect with us via phone, email, or chat today. And if you're listening, please visit us online at aegismalpractice.com. That's A-E-G-I-S malpractice.com. We have some great episodes lined up for you in the next few weeks. I hope you found this one helpful. If so, could you do me a favor and give us a like and leave a review? And be sure to subscribe to our show so that you can catch our next installment of Malpractice Insights, where we're dedicated to helping you understand medical malpractice insurance and providing you with the solutions you need so that you can get back to the work of practicing good medicine. This is Jennifer Wiggins. Thanks for joining us.